Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 44th webinar of the IEEE Agricultural Robotics and Automation Technical Committee. Today, we have our third annual lightning round. The lightning round is a special event every year where instead yeah. of a single webinar by a single person, we have as many members of the technical committee as we can fit present in one minute his uh, or her work. And today, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have uh, about 30, I believe, uh, presentations, plus three announcements of uh, special uh, journals and conferences and workshops that members of the committee are organizing. A few people uh, are indicating via the chat window uh, that they can still, uh, still cannot hear uh, or talk, and we'll try to uh, fix those problems later. So with that said, uh, let me please, uh, let me remind everybody to please mute your phone or microphone so we can get started. And remember, you have one minute to present your work. When the one minute is over and we move on to the next slide, please uh, just mute your phone or microphone and let the next person talk. And with that, let's start with Dimitris. Hello there. Hello, everybody. My name is Dimitris Zermas. I hope you can hear me. Uh, it's a, it was a nice twist there, reversing the alphabetic order, which means I'm first, so it will be last. Um, I'm from the um, uh, University of Minnesota here in Minneapolis. It's uh, 1 p.m., uh, sorry, 2 p.m. Uh, it's now today. Um, so here at the U, um, I'm working in uh, the computer science department, and uh, but we're working uh, closely with uh, professors from Precision Agriculture, uh, also at the University of Minnesota. And our goal is to um, um, uh, evaluate and develop uh, methods in order to identify nitrogen deficiency in corn uh, during the early stages. Uh, we have already developed um, uh, about a year ago um, uh, a methodology to identify nitrogen deficiency with uh, images that were taken in a top-down fashion, as you can see on the bottom right image. And we're working on uh, creating detailed 3D reconstruction of uh, corn plants uh, during their early stages of development in order to uh, estimate their leaf area index and other biomass parameters. And Thank you, Dimitris. Yes, thank you. Steve? Okay, this is Steve Young. Hope you can hear me. Yes. Cornell University uh, in Ithaca, New York, where it is currently 311. And I uh, just want to share a little bit about the work that um, involved at the um, university. And this is basically a conceptual diagram. I know it's heavy on the text, so if you just bear with me, you can see there's a figure in the lower uh, left-hand corner area. And this is some kind of conceptual ideas where we've been putting together uh, how do we how do we address integrated weed management? And so you can see that if you go across the, the bottom the x-axis, there's one method to many methods. You go up and down the y-axis, you go not specific to highly specific. And we go quickly down here to increasing level of technology goes low level traditional precision true. So I would encourage you to read our paper and uh, contact me if you have any questions. I think I'm done. Steve, right on the mark. One minute, thank you. Uh, someone who just joined, please mute your phone or microphone. Whoever just joined a few seconds ago, please mute your phone or microphone. Thank you. Um, so Hi, everyone. I don't know if uh, anybody can hear me because I don't have any audio, but um, my name is yes, Alexander Wendell. No. I'm from the Australian Center for Field Robotics in Sydney. Um, it's uh, seven o'clock here, just after seven. I'd just like to draw your attention to some work we did over um, uh, the last two years uh, with our uh, ground-based research robot, the Ladybird, which we took down to South Australia to scan some vast areas uh, of crop for a phenotyping study. 
and uh, we found that we could achieve, because the robot's fully autonomous, we could achieve some um, excellent uh, repeatability and some good uh, correlation with the ground truth. And one thing in particular we looked at is hyperspectral data, um, for which we uh, looked at um, correcting for illumination changes, um, and we uh, came up with a, um, a very convenient approach for, um, for calibrating that. Uh, which uses uh, very few target readings. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, uh, just send me an email and thank you very much for listening. Alex, thank you. Even though it looks like you cannot hear us, um, we could hear you perfectly well. So thank you very much. Uh, Rashid. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Rashid Topologlu uh, from IBM. I'm in uh, Fishkill, New York, USA. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, give you an IBM uh, overview of how uh, IBM is uh, doing some work in this area. And IBM's point of view is basically data-oriented. Uh, so 90% of the uh, uh, crop, uh, crop yield loss is relevant to weather. Uh, so if we have very fine-grained uh, weather prediction, this data can be used to avoid that loss. Also, 50% the food uh, gets harvested, but uh, can never make it to the store, and that's also uh, that can be also uh, weather uh, related. So, how can we predict these uh, these using um, some sensors and uh, improve uh, uh, improve the yield overall? Uh, ne next page. What do you mean next page? There's only one slide. Uh, there was a, I'm sorry, there there was a call for proposals. Oh, that's at the very end. All the announcements are at the end. Okay. All right. Then I'll I'll wait for for that. Uh, I have a we have a workshop uh, that uh, I will talk about where we are looking to form a, a session around agricultural uh, robotics, and I'd be uh, uh, I'd be interested in receiving some proposals uh, from you. Thank you. Thank you. In queue. Okay, I'm here. Uh, my name is Inkyu from the Zurich, Switzerland, and the local time is 9 p.m. I'm a postdoc at Autonomous System Laboratory at ETH and working on a project named Flourish. Uh, this project makes use of heterogeneous robots, such as a manned area vehicle and a manned ground vehicle, aiming for improving yield and minimizing chemical usage and user intervention. The first rule illustrates the objective of the project. UAV autonomously survey a farm field area where indicates high read pressure are reported to the UGV, and then UGV navigate to the area for applying treatment. From the second row, the, we utilize a quadrotor equipped with a multi-spectral multi camera and a visual inertia sensor for weed detection and UAV uh, set estimation, respectively. To minimize soil compaction, UGV only navigate to the problem, problematic area to suggest suggested by the UAV for navigation, autonomous ground intervention, such as a precise stamping and selective spraying. So the rule uh, uh, shows results of the UAV state estimation using ordinary GPS uh, plus the visual inertia uh, sensor and the spectral variation of the test farm field. The last column is the width classification results on UGV marked in red. In this rule, she project, sorry. Thank you, thank you very much. Can we have uh, um, yours? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Jos Rausendahl from Wageningen University in Research, uh, business unit Greenhouse Horticulture. Uh, it's 9 p.m. over here in the Netherlands. Um, I want to give you a short overview of uh, four of the main topics we are working on. Um, top left is uh, the Trimbot um, for, uh, to develop uh, an autonomous uh, trimming robot to trim hedges and uh, roses. Um, the top right is our robotic harvesting robot. Uh, it's also an uh, EU project sweeper. And the, the goal of the project is to uh, bring uh, first generation of greenhouse harvesting robots to the market. Um, the top left um, is uh, about uh, phenotyping robots. And the bottom right is uh, uh, detection of diseases and uh, pests in greenhouse crops. So that's the short overview of the, the, the main products we are working on right now. So if there are any questions about uh, these topics, please contact.
Thank you, yours. Hey, can all. We have Rajesh, please. Hey everybody, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, my name is Rajesh, I'll be representing for Blue River Technology. Uh, we, are, uh, we are a Sunnyvale, California-based startup company specializing in computer vision and robotics for agriculture. Our main mission is doing a plant-by-plant -plant care, and uh, we enable that by using computer vision techniques and using specialized hardware uh, to detect and characterize each plant so that we can take precise action with them. Some of the action we can take is like weeding, fungicide spraying, and uh, health monitoring. Uh, now I'll talk about uh, some of the systems we're working on. Going from the top left, uh, this is uh, one of our uh, thinning service machine uh, that, uh, that has been in operation. Uh, we have six lettuce thinning machines that has been operating for 500 acres per week, and uh, we treat one million plants per day. Uh, and uh, the current technology that we are trying to incorporate is called the next-gen weeding machine. And uh, uh, there are three main highlights on that. One is we operate on big row crops. We start with cotton, which has millions of acres. We are using deep learning algorithms to distinguish crops and weeds. And our main technology is in sea and spray, where we can see and detect objects and take action on them by operating at four miles per hour in precision. We Thank also work on... Thank you very much. Can we have Santosh? Santosh, are you there? Anyone from the University of Nebraska Lincoln? Okay, let's move on. Uh, Zach, are you there? Yep. Hi, this is Zach Kazmethi right. from National Robotics Engineering Center at Carnegie Mellon uh, in Pittsburgh near Marcel. Uh, so we've got a project with the USDA to work on person detection from autonomous vehicles in agricultural settings. And that's a problem that's gotten lots of attention in the urban environments, but much less so for off-road and specifically agricultural robotics. So to spur research in the field, we've created and released a very large data set of labeled videos of people in orange and apple orchards taken from a couple different vehicle platforms. And a sampling of the images from the data set is shown on the slide. Um, we'll have a table of how it stacks up against comparable data sets in urban pedestrian detection. So you can see it's got uh, way more labeled images than any of them, including stereo and video context and GPS ground truth. And it shows people in a wide variety of outfits, poses, motions, levels of occlusion from vegetation, all that stuff. Um, so it's available for download now at the URL shown, and we hope to do an Agri TC talk uh, later this year with more info. All right, perfect timing, Zach. And if I may uh, just uh, remind people of I'm trying to I'm trying to stop my clock here, and it won't shut up. Okay, sorry. I, I'm learning to use my new phone. So if I may uh, remind people of the importance of the da this data set, is a data set that was uh, financed or, or funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and it's available for download, and it's a very, very valuable uh, data set for anyone working in agricultural robotics. Uh, uh, so thank you, Zach, for making that available. So let's move on to Timo. Timo, are you there? Hello. Good evening. Go ahead. Hello. My name is Timo Oksanen. In Finland, it's uh, two. Uh, it's uh, 10 p.m. And uh, recently, we have studied uh, this kind of topic: that how to uh, do data transfer between cloud systems and mobile agricultural vehicles. There are different technologies available, but especially we have been interested on one specific technology, which is OPC Unified Architecture, and that's developed for industrial automation. And in our research, we have studied whether it's possible to combine this with ISOBA standard. So uh, uh, there is one standard for vehicles and the other standard for data communication. And the specific research question has been that how to fit the data models or information models together. And we have done this for ISOBA uh, vehicles and also for non-ISOBA like combined harvester. And uh, to answer to the question is that, yes, it's working, but there are certain challenges, and you can read more in my publications. Next one, please. Thank you very much, Timo. Uh, is it Steve or a Steve student who's presenting this one? Uh, it's me, Steve Nosky here. Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Stephen Oski at Carnegie Mellon uh, University. Uh, uh, one of the main uh, pieces of work I um, have been focusing on is automating the uh, uh, growing of grapes. Uh, in particular, we're looking at measuring uh, different characteristics of the vine, both the crop and the vine architecture, uh, and then input that information into um, uh, decision-making tools to uh, actually manage uh, different parts of the vine, um, vines either through thinning or irrigation or other types of precision management to optimize um, uh, production uh, with the goal of, you know, uh, maximizing yield and and quality of the fruit within within each uh, vineyard. Uh, do I have any time left? We still have ten seconds. Uh, yeah, it's a big project with uh, Cornell University, UC Davis, and uh, a number of other viticulturalists and industry um, growers, and we're going to be working on this for the next few years and evaluate. Uh, essentially the bottom line in, in how much uh, automation helps uh, growers and uh, their economic viability. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, do we have Giovanni or Domenico? Yes, uh, I am uh, Giovanni Muscato from University of Catania, Italy. Here in Italy is uh, 9, 20 past 9 p.m. Okay, we at the University of Catania have been involved in different uh, projects. Uh, for you know, not, not only for agriculture, but also for uh, uh, volcanic inspection, industrial application, and uh, industrial inspection. In particular, as regard uh, uh, agriculture, we have been involved in orange picking robots, artichoke picking robots, but also on autonomous prime robots for vineyards and for greenhouses. Recently, we are working on the adoption of drones, in particular for mapping. Uh, uh, outdoor environment for uh, doing autonomously traversability uh, path for autonomous system for agriculture application and also for field robotics. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giovanni. Uh, is it still Fabian there? If it's still, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Um, I am from the University of Braunschweig in Germany. It's uh, like in Italy, uh, 20 past 9 p.m. here. Um, we have a quite large range of projects concerning automation or robotics in agriculture. I just want to mention some of them. Um, on the top left, we have a project where we couple a tractor um, to, an, to any kind of implement by using a time of flight sensor for um, the navigation of the tractor. We have a project which has started where we try to um, automate the adjustment of beet harvesters by image um, processing of the harvested beets. And what I do is on the right side, it's a project together with plant scientists and farm economists, economists where we try to build comprehensive scenarios of future plant production system with robots. Thanks. I'm finished. Thank you very much. Uh, Saman? Saman, are you there? Let's uh, skip Saman and come back uh, to him uh, at the end. Uh, Cheryl? Hello. <clears throat> Hello, Cheryl McCarthy here from uh, Australia, currently 6.30 a.m. I'm from the National Centre for Engineering and Agriculture, which is a research centre at the University of Southern Queensland. The work we do is mainly in development of uh, automation and machine vision systems within our uh, automation robotics and machine vision group at our research centre. I show here three project areas that uh, is within the projects that we're working on at the moment. Top right, uh, weed spot spraying systems. So. Uh, Low-cost cameras uh, we've developed edge uh, shape analysis, text analysis to detect green from green, uh, so green weeds growing from green cropping uh, situation, and uh, real-time processing at uh, 15 kilometres per hour as the tractor's going along the crop road. I also show uh, weed 
uh, map or prescription map generation from a UAV. He, uh, uh, image analysis applied to the mosaic. We identified only 0.5% of the whole field was covered with weeds in this fallow situation. And I also show some thermal imagery from a drone in the bottom right there for irrigation monitoring. And, um, we also do work in uh, phenotyping uh, livestock and biosecurity applications. Cheryl, thank you very much, especially for being up uh, so early in the morning. Uh, Professor Yasser Khan, I believe you are on the phone, but you do not have access to the slide, so your slide is up right now. Um, hi, Marcel. I have uh, managed to work my join me app, so I, I can see you. I okay, hope you can hear me. Yes. Ah, okay, so, so it's uh, Yasin Yas Khan, uh, Director of the uh, Center of Robotics and Security at University of Central Punjab in Pakistan. It's 1.30 a.m. in Pakistan. So we have a relatively new, new group who has been working on agricultural robotics for four years. We have uh, several projects running with Germany. One is uh, the plant classification for uh, determining the biodiversity in some plantation. Another one is uh, weed detection in different uh, food crops. Then we have pest detection in different food crops. And recently we have started a project for disease detection in, in uh, crops. And we have another uh, project running in for fruit plantations, for apple and citrus plantations, where we find diseases, uh, pests, and the, uh, the deficiency of nutrients in those plants. We are mostly working on flying robots, but we are also developing some land robots. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yasser, and thank you for being uh, up at 1.30 a.m. Let's move on to Manoj. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Manoj Karki from Washington State University. Uh, here in Washington, it's uh, about 2.30 right now in the afternoon, so perhaps the best time for me, <laughs> not that early, that late. Um, in our team, we're working in a number of uh, agricultural robotics and precision agricultural technologies. Uh, I have in this slide just presented a few uh, major concepts and projects. Uh, on the top left corner, I'm talking about uh, our, the robotic apple harvesting project that was funded by USDA a few years ago. Um, lower left is uh, automated dairy harvesting, also funded by USDA and continued through some other resources. Uh, in the middle, I have another project in apple harvesting with second cat system. We call it targeted second cat, and it also uh, was funded by USDA. And right top corner, we are working in automated pruning, uh, robotic pruning um, mi middle there in the right side, uh, using UAS for bird deterrence, a very exciting project that we are working on last uh, two years or so. And the lower right would be weed control for vegetable crops. Um, that is overlapping with many of you. Uh, with that, a lot of publications there for you. Uh, if there are any questions, give me a call Thank or send me an email. Thank you, Manoj. Uh, someone from Carnegie Mellon presenting on behalf of George. Yeah, I'm going to uh, talk to George's slides. So he's uh, away on leave. Uh, George Cantor um, is, has been uh, working on the uh, number of different agricultural applications and this one in is a, a ground robot for uh, phenotyping crops uh, so it can uh, uh, both collect um, image data measuring uh, uh, stalk count, stalk size, different um, characteristics of um, uh, visual characteristics of the plant and also it has a an arm that can reach out and grab the stalk and measure stalk strength. Um, uh, so the camera, the arm has a stereo uh, pair on the uh, on the end effector, and it reaches out, grabs the stalk, and measures the strength. Uh, it has a variety of different uh, sensors for navigation at the front of the vehicle, lidars, um, and and other cameras, and also lidars at the top of the mast to uh, to see the the crop rows. So it can uh, do navigation and positioning uh, accurately uh, throughout the field. And the, and the task here is to um, uh, to help with selection for breeding phenotyping. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, who is this? Uh, Vojokas, yes. 
Avi Kani. Oh, no, uh, no, this is it, Avi. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. Avi, go ahead. Avi Kani, Tel Aviv, Israel, uh, half past 10 p.m. Uh, we are developing a robotic system for harvesting of fresh foods. Uh, it's based on a linear motion of the robots, and it's mounted to uh, a harvesting edge system uh, currently available in the market. Uh, the, uh, the, the technique we are using uh, to identify the food is based on deep learning algorithm, and we are using RGB cameras and uh, time of flight uh, for uh, 3D location of the system. And we are using PLC to uh, to control all the robotics arm, integrated with the ROS as, uh, as the infrastructure of the entire system. If you want uh, to see uh, the, the, the machine working, please uh, go to our website. Uh, thank you. Avi, thank you very much. Uh, is this uh, Yoris? Yeah, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, I'm Joris IJsselmuiden from uh, Wageningen in the Netherlands. It's around uh, 9.30 p.m. And I want to show you uh, the eight uh, main robotics projects that we are currently working on. So the common goal of these is uh, yeah, to produce more with less. And most notably, we want to reduce the human labor requirements. So image one here shows a robot uh, to collect floor eggs in a uh, cage-free poultry house. Number two is a weed detection system for spot spraying. Three is from the TrimBot project. We already saw that, uh, where we developed the world's first uh, garden trimming robot. Four is from the Saga project, where we use drones to map weed infestations. And five is uh, a new project we just started. Uh, we'll, it's about designing uh, new high-tech farming systems. And there we also focus on disease control and weeding. Finally, in the left images, six, seven, and eight, uh, this is from PhD research that we supervise together with two of the Wageningen research groups. So with all of these projects, we want to produce more, better, safer, more varied food with less labor, less fuel, water, less fertilizers, and less pesticides. Thank you. That's a great message. Thank you. Uh, Lars? Yes. Hi. This is Lars Kempstra. Eating at the Norwegian University uh, in Norway. But right now I'm Rio de Janeiro. It's 6.35 p.m. So uh, I want to show you uh, our new robot, level two mod uh, modular robots. So we work in uh, different environments, in greenhouses, in polytunnels, and in the field. So we wanted to be able to use the same robot in all, all these environments. So we designed a robot based on modules. Um, so the standard uh, configuration of the robot has eight mo motors with four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering. But it can easily be uh, rebuilt into two-motor differential drive uh, or tricycle versions of different widths. Um, so it's like a Lego kit for robots. So the ro Thorvald robots are currently being used at our university in Norway and also at the University of Lincoln in the UK. So uh, we would like to mention that uh, we are announcing four new PhD uh, positions and three new postdoc positions in agricultural robotics in the next few months. So uh, which of, uh, of half of them are in Norway, the rest in the UK. So if this sounds interesting, please give us uh, a call. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Lars. Uh, Amir. Yeah, I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah. Amir Degani from Technion in Israel, half past 10 um, in the evening. So um, I'm directing the Civil, Environmental, and Agricultural Robotics Lab, and I wanted to talk about um, two different projects. The, the first on the top is about uh, manipulation, harvesting, and the idea we have is that um, since uh, farmers don't want to buy a robot that will only work a, a month out of the year, um, we thought about the modular approach. Um, of having basic modules, and by changing the orders of the modules, you can see on the top, um, the, the robot can then harvest different tasks, peach, apples, oranges, and so on. Um, on the bottom, um, you see some of the mobile robots we have in the lab. We have a few um, things that we do with them. Mostly, we want to work um, in GPS-denied environments, like um, high canopy orchards, We're trying to do um, um, accurate localization using UAVs. Um, we do 3D orchard scans from them. And now recently we're starting doing deep learning using true learning to actually 
um, see where the robots can uh, traverse when there's um, very rough terrain. So yeah, that's kind of like a yeah the one minute recap of some of the work we do. Thank you, Amir. Uh, is uh, Gert or Hendrik there? Yes. Hi, uh, I'm in Hendrik de Villiers from Food and Bio-Based yeah. Research at Wageningen University. It's 930 here in the Netherlands. Uh, we work on quality assessment using deep neural networks. Uh, these can be trained to highlight areas of interest. So in the top example, you can see that worm damage on the apple is being highlighted by the network. Uh, these networks work by pooling context from neighboring image regions. and then make high level decisions. And then this gets decoded to a prediction for each pixel in the image. The great advantage of this is the flexibility uh, because the network's trained end to end, it actually learns image processing and decision making at the same time uh, by just looking at the training data. So we show some other examples here at the bottom left. Uh, there's an example of grape stalk detection for a robot gripper. And at the bottom right, there's an example of using different data with near infrared images detecting uh, holes and cuts in tomatoes. Um, okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, hello. Um, my name is Peter Block, and uh, I'm working at Wageningen Plant Research, uh, business uh, department agro-systems research. Um, I'm currently calling from Ingolstadt, Germany, from a business trip, and the local time is 9.39 p.m. Um, our research is mainly focused on uh, robotics in the open field. Uh, um, we are on uh, selective harvesting robots for uh, vegetables, um, autonomous sprayers, uh, orchard robots, a lot of field robots, and much of our research is uh, based on the computer vision techniques. Uh, in the, on the below you see uh, an example of 3D imaging techniques to detect diseased potatoes. And we do that by plant foliometric estimation uh, in the field. That's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, okay, uh, that's uh, me. I'm Marcel Bergerman, as uh, uh, everybody has figured out by now. Uh, even though I do continue sending emails for the AgroBotics TC from my uh, CMU account, I'm no longer a CMU uh, faculty for a couple of years now. Uh, since uh, I've been running this uh, small business near Earth Autonomy in Pittsburgh for about four years now. And our company is essentially about making aerial vehicles um, autonomous, uh, safe, and easy to use and practical. Uh, and useful. So from large scale, uh, big military helicopters carrying cargo uh, to U.S. Marines position anywhere in the world, to small aircraft flying indoor and outdoor doing mapping inspection or package delivery, uh, we do a little bit of everything in the aerial systems domain. And particularly on the bottom right, you see our agrobotics uh, project that is funded by the Department of Energy to use sorghum as a bioenergy crop. Thank you. And moving on to Avital. Avital, are you there? Yes, but I have a problem with the mic. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's not a problem, so you can hear us, but uh, we cannot hear you. So why don't we move uh, on to Brad, and then we'll try to go back to Avital at the end. Brad, Hello, are you there? My, yeah, I'm here. Um, my name is Brad Baysmore. I'm a master's student at the University of Georgia, and uh, I've been developing a user interface for all Ross field robots. Uh, that's completely web-based. It runs mobile-friendly and uh, tablets and everything of the sort. We just started the system right now. Um, we're going to be adding machine learning and data analytics to it so that any data collected through ROS topics is able to be analyzed in real time, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, user accounts, secure encryption, and uh, simplifying it so that the robots can be used in other applications. My GitHub is right there and my email address if you want to get in touch with me. I'm looking for a PhD, so shoot me an email if you have an idea. 
Thank you. We already know there are some openings in the University of Lincoln, uh, uh, if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that down. Very good. Thank you, Brad. Uh, Gokhan, are you there? Yes. Yes, Master. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Gokhan Mayar. I am from the Mechanical Engineering Department of Plant Egypt University, located in Zonguldak, Turkey. Uh, mainly, uh, I am uh, I am working on development of autonomous ground robots and uh, autonomous agricultural vehicles. Also, my research is focusing on slippage estimation, control of ground and agricultural vehicles. Also, I am working on sensor fusion or autonomous orchard applications. And currently, uh, my research team has been working on uh, the uh, conducting accurate tree trunk detection and row estimation and precise row following in agricultural applications. Also, uh, we have been trying to develop some LiDAR systems which are low cost, easy to use, and easy to adapt uh, for scanning agricultural fields. And, take, and thank you. Thank you very much, Gokhan. Uh, and uh, Sushet, you are Good morning from Sydney. Um, unfortunately, my audio is not working, so I hope you can all hear me. Yes. And so I'm Suchet Bargodi from SCFR, and this talks on our work on yield mapping in orchards. The motivation here is to understand the distribution of crop load across the farm, and it involves gathering sensor data and deploying fruit detection and mapping algorithms. So on the left here is our general purpose perception platform, which has a range of sensing modalities and it gathers data across the farm. Then fruit detections are made on individual images um, using state-of-the-art machine learning architectures. And these detections are tracked between subsequent frames and also localized in 3D. The counts can then be mapped spatially across the orchard and they can even be associated to individual trees by using some of the automated tree segmentation algorithms that we have built. So have a look at the link below uh, for more information or get in touch with me for any discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sushet. Uh, Gideon. Yeah, hello everyone, hope you can hear me. So I'm Gideon Avigal, I'm from Vinan Research and Innovation Center, which is in Ontario, Canada. The time now is just 3.45. Uh, so the robotics and engineering group at Vinan is working to find uh, solutions to enhance productivity in the horticulture industry, mainly. And we're currently working about 10 projects. One of our leading projects is the mushroom harvester. You can see we are doing everything around it from uh, the robotics and the decision system. And the decision system that it supports is something that we have just developed um, has proven to be at least as good as the expert harvester, and which opens the way for other automations, uh, robotics, and so forth. We're working like others of you around uh, projects around smart irrigation, disease detection, using uh, hyperspectral, and, and so forth, and we've got some good results on high reliable uh, indices. And beyond that, we are working on hardcore automation, packaging and planting machines, and currently finalizing our tulip bulb planter, which should be ready soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gideon. So that concludes the uh, individual presentations. We are going to very quickly do three announcements and then go back and try to solve the uh, connection problems for uh, Santosh and for Avital. So let's see who had this one. Please, you can talk now. Okay, so this probably was Steve Young. Uh, he had to leave, uh, but he's organizing uh, uh, the annual meeting of the Wheat Science Society of America in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, it's going to happen in two weeks. And uh, there is information here for those interested in uh, participating. Uh, if you don't have Steve Young's email, it should be on his slide. It's, if not, contact me and I'll put you in touch with him. Manoj? Yeah, I'm here. Do you hear me? Yeah. So um, recently we um, collaborated with MDPI, Journal Robotics, to organize a special issue on agricultural robotics. Um, it will cover everything we talked about today and certainly beyond that. And if anybody interested in submitting a manuscript, um, it will be uh, due by mid-May, I guess. 
Uh, there will be some flexibility, most probably, but again, uh, if you have any questions, contact me. There is a um, web address down in that, in that slide, my email address as well. Uh, myself and Dr. Xinjiang will be editing this special issue. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Rashid, you're still there? Yes. Uh, yeah. Hi, folks. This is uh, Rashid Topoglu from uh, IBM. So we are organizing a, uh, an IEEE uh, workshop. Uh, uh, by, by short, we call it Avatar, and it emphasizes uh, uh, autonomous autonomous vehicles and robotics. And located uh, in Austin, Texas, uh, June 18th of Sunday. If uh, so, we are interested in forming a session. Uh, on arch architectural robotics, if you think you could uh, join, just uh, shoot me an email. Um, uh, my email is restit at us.ibm.com. Uh, and uh, so I think it will be uh, a good opportunity to meet with uh, some folks outside your uh, domain as well. In particular, this is collocated to Design Automation Conference. And there are a lot of people who are experts in automation and algorithms, so it can uh, bring some uh, uh, nice uh, synergy. So please send me an email if you're interested in presenting. Thank you very much. So Thank you. let me ask uh, Avital, uh, were you able to get your microphone working? Are you there? OK, uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, how about Santosh? Santosh, are you there? Okay, uh, so the slides are there. Santosh is and and uh, okay, you're, Santosh, you're there, but uh, do you still still having connection problems? I not hearing him. Okay, uh, so uh, 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 like we said in the beginning, sometimes problems will happen, but Santosh's and Avital's slides are on the deck. Uh, and their emails are there, so please uh, do feel free to contact them if you would like to learn more about their work. Uh, so that concludes our third annual Agricultural Robotics and Automation TC Lightning Round. Uh, let me thank everybody who presented today. We had 30 participants uh, from, from what I could gather, at least 10 or 12 countries. Uh, people joining uh, all the way from uh, about 12 noon uh, on Wednesday all the way through the night and into 6 a.m., now almost 7 a.m. in Australia. And that's what makes this uh, group strong and interesting, is the, uh, uh, the, 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 the very wide uh, variations of geographies and types of work and uh, Teams of research, academia, industry, professors, uh, engineers, scientists, students. So let's keep this uh, group strong and uh, let's move on to make 2017 a great year for ag robotics and automation. We already have a webinar lined up on February, at the end of February, on the 21st, I believe, uh, with a presenter from Portugal. Uh, the slides will go up uh, in, uh, on our website very soon. And if anyone uh, would like to uh, get a copy uh, of any other material, uh, of any other webinars that we presented in the past, they are also on our website. Thank you, everybody. And I hope you guys have a great afternoon or morning uh, or night, wherever you are. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.